In this lab, I'll show you how to exploit the CLTE vulnerability and get access to the admin page and delete the user Carlos using request smuggling. I'll also show you exactly why we get a duplicate header names are not allowed error and how to work around it, and why we have to add a request body parameter to our smuggled request, and why we're setting a content length and content type for that smuggled request. Let's get started. I'm on the homepage of our application here that we're targeting, and it's the root endpoint here that we want. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And I'm gonna send this get slash request to repeater and switch to repeater. And we'll start by setting up our attack request. So I'm gonna rename this tab to attack request. And then here to the right under request attributes, you wanna downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. And I'm also gonna right click and change the request method to post. And then I'm going to delete any unnecessary headers. Um, so anything above content type and underneath the host header, we don't need those. Because this is a CLTE lab, uh, you want to leave on uh, update content length automatically. That way we won't have to fiddle with the content length uh, after every change we make. It's kind of handy for CLTE. And you also want to show, or I always do show non-printable characters because it shows the new lines here. And that's handy for uh, byte counting and just to make sure that you don't have an extra one or a missing one. I'm also going to right click and send a copy of this one to repeater. And then I'm going to rename this to normal request and that'll become our normal request. I'm going to add fake data here, uh, foo equals bar and just send this to make sure that we get a 200 okay. And we do, and I'm gonna do the same here, but I'm also going to set the transfer encoding chunk header. And I'm just going to add a uh, valid chunk size of three ABC followed by the closing chunk. So the terminating chunk followed by the two carriage return line feeds. And I'm going to send this as well, just to make sure that we get back a 200 okay, and we do. So now we're ready to start our request smuggling. And I'm gonna start by requesting a resource that doesn't exist. So it's just some gibberish here, followed by the HTTP protocol. So we want HTTP 1.1, followed by the carriage return line feed. Let's send this, and then go to our normal request and send that as well. And we get back invalid request. And that is because if I copy everything here in the, in the normal request on the left, and I paste it after um, the request that we've poisoned the backend with, so this data here, you can see that we have a problem here on line 11 and 12. We have two request methods, get and post. This is clearly invalid, so let's try fixing that. So I'm gonna remove what we had pasted here from the normal request before, and we're gonna take a different approach where I'm going to add a request header with a name of Yarno for a value of X and not followed by a carriage return line feed. And what that will do is when our normal request is appended to it, which starts with a post, it will be appended like this. And that kind of fixes the double request method issue that we had before. So I remove the post here and let's just send this request. We get back a 200 okay. Go to our normal request and send it as well. And now we get back a not found. So we get the 404 error. And this confirms here that our attack for this um, resource that doesn't exist is working. So I'm gonna delete the gibberish that we had here before and just request the admin page and then send this request. We get back a 200 okay and then send our normal request. And we get back 401 unauthorized. And if I render the page, you can see more clearly the admin interface is only available to local users. So let's try and trick the backend into thinking that we are a local users because we don't have credentials for this admin page, but through a trick like using X forwarded four or the one that we're going to apply here in our attack request by supplying a host header for a value of local host, we might be able to trick the backend into thinking that this is a local request. So let me send this and we get back at 200 okay. And then I'm gonna send the normal request and now we get a 400 bad request. Duplicate header names are not allowed. And this is because if I go to the left here and copy our entire normal request again, and go to our attack request, and I paste it after the header Yarno for a value of X here, you can clearly see that on line 12 and 14 here, we have two host headers. So we have duplicate request headers. That's why we're seeing that error. So now we have to think, how can we fix that? And the way we're going to do that is by actually moving 
what is in our normal request, what gets appended to our prefix that we've poisoned the backend with by moving that to the request body. So we can put a new line here and then we can set a request body parameter for a value of let's say X equals. And then when we send our normal request, the idea would be that it would be appended to our uh, request body parameter here. And that might fix our uh, duplicate header name issue for the host header. So let's give that a go. So I'm going to delete what we had here, what we had pasted here. So we just have X equals none. And then the next thing we need to think of is what is our uh, normal request going to do? Or what is the backend going to do with our normal request if we don't set a content length? Well, that would mean that our content length would equal zero and the backend server will just ignore the X equals that we've set here. So we do have to supply a content length that has to be big enough so that at least one byte of the normal request that we send is appended to our smuggled request body here. So I'm going to copy these uh, line three and four here, the content length and the content type. And I'm going to, we don't really need the uh, header Yarno here anymore because we have a different way of solving this now by moving everything to the request body. So let's delete this and I'm just going to paste the content type and content length. Now the question is, what is the minimum content length that we should set? And the answer is, so we have X equals here, which is two bytes. So we can set it to two bytes already, but we should ensure that at least one uh, character or one byte of our normal request is appended to it so that our uh, smuggled request here gets triggered when we want it. So I'm going to change the content length here to three and that should be enough for the minimum and then send this request and we get back at 200 okay and I'm going to go to the normal request and send it as well. We get back at 200 okay. If we go to render we can see that we now have the option to delete users. Let's go to pretty again and underneath here we need the link for Carlos so I'm going to copy this and go back to our attack request and now instead of slash admin we need what we copied before and let's send this request and we get back at 200 okay took a few seconds and now let's send our normal request and we get back at 302 found which indicates that our delete uh, worked so let's go to the lab and we can see congratulations you've solved the lab i hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching